Blog Talk Radio. From the gridirons to the courts, to the links, the fast turns, and the home run. Heard only on Source Radio Network. You're now listening to Sports Tuesday with your host, Steve Manders.
the second hour, just going over uh, the NFL, uh, talk more baseball, and um, you know some college uh, football. A lot of really important games happened uh, over uh, the weekend, and so I'll be doing a overall summary of what went on. And uh, I may have a surprise guest in the uh, second hour. So we'll see how that goes. So right now, my guest definitely in the first hour is Ronald Ages, and we'll be talking NBA basketball. So uh, we're going to take a break right now. So hang in there, and uh, we'll be right back. Source Nation, you're listening to Sports Tuesday with Dean Manderson. We'll be right back. Source Radio Network is just one of the many platforms that is used to fulfill dreams of our listeners and create a purpose that will impact the lives of our communities, cities, and the world. It is often said that great things will happen when a group of driven people work together to accomplish one goal. We're giving people the opportunity to have a voice, translate words that haven't been heard, and paint pictures that no one has seen. Source Radio Network is fueling your life's purpose. How can you listen? www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash source radio. Sure, humans can be a little weird at times, but take it from me, I'm a dog. And a person is about the best thing that can happen to a shelter pet. So if you want to learn how you can be that person, get down to your local pet shelter or visit the shelterpetproject.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. This is Firing Renee, coming at you with a Food Stuff production.
to Sports Tuesday. I am Steve Manderson. Ronald Ages, he'll be, um, I guess, in the first hour talking um, about the NBA season. Uh, you can also check him out on uh, Saturday uh, evenings from 6 to 8 on uh, In the Zone Sports Radio um, with uh, his co-host, Betty Cantley. And uh, Betty has been on the uh, Sports Tuesday before. This is Ronald. This will be Ronald's first time. So I'm looking forward to talking with him. I'm going to bring on right now my guest, and he'll talk further about what's going on in the uh, NBA. Uh, he is uh, the new ca- uh, newscast director for WBTV. He's sports writer for True Hoops Network, and he's currently the co-host of In the Zone Sports Radio. You'll check him out on Saturday evenings from 6 to 8, along with his co-host, Betty Cantley. Let me bring on right now Ronald Hagers. Ronald, how are you? Doing all right, man. I'm doing okay, man. Thanks for having me on your show, man. Well, listen, it's my pleasure. I thank you very much uh, for coming on. Um, let's talk some NBA. As, uh, you probably heard me just uh, discussing uh, right now the Knicks and the Nets. Um, but the NBA in general right now has, is very interesting. Certain, let me ask you this right off the bat. Um, the season basically just six to seven games old. Who right now in either the Eastern Conference or the Western Conference is a surprise to you right now? On the Western side, uh, to be totally honest, which is the Golden State Warriors, man, to be totally – they're just not very good right now. Um, they are turning the ball over at an alarming rate. It looks like they're just fat and happy right now. It looks like they're uh, – everybody got their endorsement deal. Everybody got their contract. Everybody's living <laughs> really, really good. But they just doesn't – they really do not – have the sense of urgency that they had in the past. Um, listen, no one wins ring night. They lost to Houston uh, opening night uh, by one. Kevin Durant hit a jumper by, by a half a second too late. But the point, mm-hmm. the, the point of the matter is this. What made Golden State so great was not only did they score at an alarming rate, but they defended very well, and they took care of the ball. Look, Steph Curry always turned the ball over always turn the ball over at a certain um, amount to the point that his, that his mom, Sonya Curry, actually finds him $100 for every single turnover that he has. At the rate uh. he's going right now, she's going to have a, an entire she's going to have an entire wardrobe for the finals if they get back at the rate that they're going. So with the Golden uh-huh. State Warriors being, they're the shocker right now. They just don't, they don't look good. Very, they just don't look very good. They're not very crisp right now. Another team in the West that I'm really kind of shocked about it's the San Antonio Spurs. They might have found they, they might have found the, the real Lamarcus Aldridge after last year. He did not look very very good in the playoffs, even to the point that they were considering trading him away, looking for fears to trade him at the trading deadline last year. Greg Popovich sits down uh, with Lamarcus Aldridge in the off season. They had some things out, and right now he looks very very good. And I'm talking about the Portland Trail Blazers, Lamarcus Aldridge. This is the guy that they gave. $120 million, too. They gave him a $72 million extension this year. So, with him coming back, Kawhi Leonard hadn't played yet. Tony Parker's been out. Manu Ginobili's 903 right now. He's old as Methuselah. They're still rolling along, but it just it's more important uh, opposed to um, Rick Popovich and that system and the San Antonio Spurs being the class act that they are in the NBA. In the Eastern Conference, man, look, the Detroit Pistons are an out-and-out shock. Really, I'm not a fan of Stan Van Gundy. After a while, he tends to wear on the players, especially after last year. Reggie Jackson not getting along. They sent him home for the last 15 games just because they, uh-huh. they just wanted him to go. They just sent him away. Andre Drummond, they tried to trade him away after a $100 million contract, giving him a $100 million contract. The fact that they've come together and starting to play well is really, really a shocker to me. Uh, what I'm not shocked about is the Cleveland Cavaliers not playing well. I mean, we all sh- was anybody really, really shocked um, that they're struggling right now? They got new players in. Derrick Rose, he gets he he's already actually five games on, two two games off for any injury you can pick one. Uh, Dwayne Wade has not uh, found his legs yet. 
and LeBron James is now being put at point guard. They just continue to, it's just continuous changes in that lineup, them struggle the way they are. Uh, I'm not shocked about the Boston Celtics because guess what? They had Kyrie Irving. Um, the big thing uh, your, your, your listeners need to listen to, uh, Steve, is um, check out for Al Horford. He's going to be the key of the Boston Celtics going forward because the, for the first couple of games, he looked terrible. He he didn't play well in the first game opening night against the Cleveland Cavaliers. If he plays well, even with the injury to Gordon Hayward, they still win the game. I think they still would have won that game. Al Horford looked lost. He looked soft. He's not. He wasn't rebounding. Now he looks a little bit tougher. He looks like that All Star center in Atlanta. Look for the Boston Celtics. I picked them to to win the Eastern Conference um, Finals before the Kyrie Irving trade. That only just um, strengthened my argument with when it came to with that trade. But Al Horford is going to be the key for the Boston Celtics going forward if they want to make it to the NBA Finals. Well, I tell you, uh, that's interesting because uh, with when Hay when Hayward went down with that devastating injury, I mean, I couldn't even see the the replay anymore. Um, he was supposed to be the vital cog for um, the Celtics, especially uh, in the front line, and to play alongside with Hartford. And when he went down, I said, uh, does the Celtics have enough to take it to unseat Cleveland? Now, you're saying you really think so, but as I said, a lot of it has to come from Hartford. He has to have the kind of season that a lot of people in the NBA vision him to 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 debate, and with Irving, um, do you feel is he personally? I feel with Irving, listen, you don't want to be a you're not under LeBron anymore. This is now your team. You have to take this team by the horns and show Brad Stevens that they made the right choice in getting you. Do you agree? But but under, yes, but but you got to understand something. They need Kyrie Irving to be the closer. He's the closer. He was the closer in Cleveland. I think people get caught up in the stats. I'm not saying LeBron James can't can't play ball. I'm not saying he's not the best player of his era. I almost got um I almost got roasted when I said I didn't think LeBron James was the top 15 player of all time. But y'all got to pay attention to what LeBron James does. Yes, he can, be, he can be a stat stuffer. He can get them assists. He can get the rebounds. And it looks very, very good for the first three and a half quarters. But pay attention to what LeBron James, James does in the last five minutes. That's when I call when the streetlights come on. Does he take the, um, the, the pressure shot? Does he make that pressure stop in, when the team needs it in crunch time? That's when he still tends to struggle. If you just give him the ball, and just let him drive to the basket. There's just ways to stop LeBron James. And, and to be totally honest with you, a lot of people are intimidated by the aura of LeBron James. But if you allow this guy to make the crucial play in the last five minutes, a lot of times he does not deliver. Kyrie Irving is the guy that was delivering. He was the assassin that was getting Cleveland over the, over the top uh, to the world title. LeBron James didn't hit that shot over Steph Curry. Kyrie Irving hit that shot over Steph Curry. Kyrie Irving can get any shot that he wants, and that's what the Boston Celtics need. They just need a closer when the games are tight, and he can al- And we already can see that Kyrie Irving can do that. Al Horford, he's just going to have to toughen up and get those tough rebounds. He's not going to be a rim protector. He's not going to block shots, but he's going to have to make, make some of these guards and uh, small forwards think about him going to the rim and whatnot. Just do something to that extent. Uh, one of the Mars twins, we gotta wait for him to show up. But they do they're gonna they're actually a better defensive team statistically with uh, Kyrie Irving, but it's gonna be interesting how much they miss Jay Crowder and how much they're gonna miss Avery Bradley who got sent to to the Detroit Pistons. And also uh-huh. um, understand this, understand this. The Boston Celtics have a whole lot of assets. Plus that eight point four four million dollar um Injury um, injury package from the NBA. So look for Danny Ainge to make moves. He always is making moves. He's always on the phone. He's always trying to make that team better. So look, I at one time I was not a Danny Ainge fan as a general manager, but right now he is 
considered one of the better general managers that we have in the NBA right now. So uh-huh. with the trade deadline coming up, he can make some moves and throw in the fact that, hey, Eric Bledsoe is on the block right now. He's on the block in Phoenix. I mean, listen, he got caught up uh, saying, I don't want to be here. Then he's going to make up some make up some story saying that he was stuck in the, uh, in his woman's uh, hair salon, which we all <laughs> really don't. Let me just say this real quick. Eric Bledsoe, I'm a big fan of Eric Bledsoe. The dude can play. He's a flat-out stud. Mm-hmm. But you know as well as I do, ain't no grown man going to get stuck in a hair salon <laughs> with it, waiting on his woman to get his hair done. The last time any man that did this, they were kids and they were there with their mama. Let's there be clear on that. So if he goes, but, but if he goes to um, Boston or Cleveland, it's going to drastically change those uh, change those franchises. Could he very well go to the Knicks? Because uh, I don't I, really see Ramon Sessions being their everyday point guard. I don't think so either. But I don't think they've already drafted a point guard, but. They're not going to give up those um give up those assets those young core assets going forward. They're just not going to do that. They've already get, gotten burned with the Phil Jackson era, bringing in Derrick Rose, bringing in Joe King Noah, and uh-huh. I mean to be totally honest, I don't think they're going to go with the youth movement. That's what got Carmelo uh, a ticket out of town. They're going to roll with that all the way through. I don't see them uh, coming up with it. And Eric Bledsoe trade giving up all their assets just for one player. And he's been injury prone for the last couple of years. That is a good point. Now you mentioned Carmelo. Uh, will that trio of Westbrook, Paul George, and Carmelo work in OKC? Do you think that is the right combination? Do you think there is a chemistry there uh, that could take them uh, to? let's say, back to the uh, Western Conference Finals? I don't think so, and here's why. Listen, they're going to have to sacrifice. I, it sounds good on television when you're saying, well, we're going to sacrifice, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. But here's the thing. They're going to have to figure out, and it's going to take a while, 20, 25 games before we can even really make a, a speculation. So right now I'm just guessing at this point. But uh-huh. for me to make an educated guess right now, they have to – they're going to have to sacrifice. I don't like the fact that Paul George comes off the wing, off a few picks, and fires up a lot of threes. They shoot a whole bunch. Uh, Stephen yeah. Adams, they don't, they could use him as a down low, down post player, low post player. Um, they just shoot the ball just a little bit too much. And also, Russell Westbrook is still doing a ton, racking up these triple doubles like he's doing, these assists and whatever the case may be. And the big thing is, look, if you're going to go to the finals. You better play some defense. And the Thunder do not play good enough defense. Melo ain't played defense since he left Denver. Uh, <laughs> Paul George really pretty much left Indiana for less responsibility. So to hear these type of things, it's just not going to work. And to see, and it's going to take time for them to come together and jail on the offensive end. Look, they all can score a ton, so that's not a problem. The problem is, do they defend well enough to go to the conference finals? And I'm telling you, no. They cannot beat the San Antonio Spurs because guess what? They defend. Go to State Warriors. Right. They can't beat them because the go to State Warriors, when they wake up out of this fog that they're in right now, they defend. And the Houston Rockets, good Lord, they just shoot. They just, I mean, they just score at will. But I think they got enough uh, to they got enough to um, to make the big stop with Chris Paul in the uh, in the lineup when things get um, get hectic. Oh. Now, the team that I'm keeping a close eye on all year is the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, this is a young team that uh, made some excellent moves during the offseason. Um, they built a team around Carl Anthony Towns, who, in my opinion, will be the next superstar uh, in this league. Along with Andrew Wiggins, they got Jimmy Butler. They got Todd Gibson. Uh, they got uh, Jamal Crawford uh, coming off the bench. Um, this is a team uh, that's well coached by Tom Thibodeau, and he's a defensive-minded uh, coach. I see this team 
um, improving to the point where they'll make the playoffs. And I don't think they'll make it as an eight seed. I think they'll make it maybe as a seven or six and uh, could do some damage. Uh, what do you think? Uh it depends because it's funny naming these players, and I'm going to watch them too because, I mean, my New York Knicks are going to stink for the for pretty much the rest of this year. But I'm going to tell you something right now. The Minnesota Timberwolves defense is awful. I mean, they're, they're, they're at the bottom of the league in a lot of defensive categories. They're just not very good right now. And it's really uh-huh. shocking considering that Tom Thibodeau is a um, is defensive coach. But yes, uh, Carl Anthony uh-huh. Towns needs, needs work on, uh, on his uh, low post defense. Uh, Todd Kip Gibson, he's looking, he's looking a little long in the tooth. He is long in the tooth. Now he's starting to look long in the tooth. Um, <laughs> Jimmy Butler, great pickup. I like Jamal Crawford and his big pickup. Jeff Teague, I've never, ever, ever really liked his motor, so to speak. To speak, he's one of those guys uh-huh. that just tries to be too cool on a basketball court. And believe it or not, Ricky Rubio was more efficient on the floor on the offensive side than Jeff Teague was right now. So, uh-huh. on paper, they look good. I'm a Jimmy Butler fan of He's one of my favorite players in the NBA, one of the best two-way players in the league, period, point blank, possibly behind Kawhi Leonard. But they just they just don't defend very well. They can't give up 110, 15, 115 points a night. And even if they did make the playoffs, they'd be swept in a, they'd be swept in a week, week and a half, uh, four games straight. So, they're going to have to pick up their defensive uh, intensity. They're going to have to get better because they're being at the bottom of the league in defense – and defense is just well, not going to get it. Good point. Very good point. Um, Lonzo Ball with the Lakers. Do you feel in your in your mind uh, that uh, the the Lakers uh, made a a right choice in selecting Ball, the number one pick? Because uh, I, I will tell you right now, I'm not really sold on him yet. And the main issue that I have with him is his dad. I mean, to be honest with you, he needs to shut up and yeah, take a number. stop. You know. hmm? take, a, take a number. I mean, you get in line right along with everybody <laughs> else. I mean, I think <laughs> Lonzo Ball, one, is he's going to he's going to be okay. I mean, look, uh, he looked, he he got embarrassed against Patrick Beverly. They pretty much threw him in the water and said, welcome to the NBA, and he gave him the treat. He pretty much gave him the treatment. But here's the uh-huh. thing with Alonzo uh, Ball. Alonzo Ball cannot shoot a lick. Okay, let's be clear. That man can't shoot. He just can't shoot. He couldn't shoot in college. He's even worse now in the NBA. He's, they're going to have to do some things with that. Can he run the offense? Is he going to be a dynamic player? Should the Lakers have picked him? Sure. I ain't got no problem with that. But as for Alonzo uh-huh. Ball, he needs to understand something. The, you need, and your listeners as well, pay attention to this phrase. Do not un- ever underestimate the power of the pride of the NBA players. When your dad says, "Man, you gonna go in? I'm coming. We're coming in. Let's say Detroit, and we're gonna just, just you're gonna get destroyed." Reggie Jackson's gonna get mad, and he said, "I'm gonna light him up for thirty some odd points." Yeah. I think what happens sometimes, and the NBA has to watch this, they can't get too focused on Levar Ball. Look what happened with the Washington Wizards. Uh, yeah. LeVar Ball said, "Hey, he's gonna destroy John Wall." John Wall did not have a good he did not have a good efficient game. Uh, the Wizards should have won the game. They left they missed about three four field goal free throws down the stretch, and guess what? The Lakers won the game. So Lonzo Ball is now turning into the rallying cry for all the um for for the rest of the team. So the NBA is gonna have to watch this. After a while, I think LeVar Ball. I think the NBA is gonna have to treat. LeVar Ball, kind of like I treat Donald Trump. Shut up, let him talk, and just keep on doing what you're doing. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That is a good one. Um, I know a surprise for me right now is the uh, Brooklyn Nets. Um, their offense uh, surprises me a lot so far. Their third in offense, um, averaging 114 points a game. Defensively, they're a horror show. But I think at a certain point, um, they're going to have to, in order for them to win games, they're going to have to outscore people this year. I do see improvement with this team. They're young, and there's no pressure on them to win games because nobody expects them to win 
any games anyway. Uh, but I think their coach and their GM uh, seem like they're heading in the right direction. You basically, uh, you basically uh, th- took the words right out of my mouth. This is not about. This is really not about what's going on on the floor right now. It's about the front office. Let's be clear here. Uh, mm-hmm. Billy King was a bad general manager. He's pretty much destroyed oh, two yes. franchises with old players mm-hmm. that have been overpaid. He ki- he killed Philadelphia 76ers, and they didn't get right till the Colangelos came in, and now the Brooklyn yeah. Nets. Um, yeah. Bringing Sean Marks in, but Sean Marks came from where? The San Antonio Spurs. San yeah. Antonio Spurs. So he has a culture of winning. It's about that culture. They need that more than anything else. To be totally honest, I said on another podcast, that uh, the New York Knicks are in a worst case. The Brooklyn Brooklyn Nets are in a better better spot than the uh, New York Knicks are right now, based on the fact that, that their front office is is basically set. They have a culture. They have a system that they're going to run. Period. Point blank. There's no way. There's no way around it. You got to It always starts at the top of the, the ownership group, and with the Brooklyn Nets getting ready to be um being sold anyway as we speak, going through the NBA circles yeah. as we as as it's going on right now. Uh-huh. It might get even be- It might even get better for the Brooklyn Nets because um, Mikhail uh, Prokhorov was an absentee owner. He was never around for the day-to-day operation. It hurt, and I think the Brooklyn Nets, in about three, maybe four years, may be a team to watch in the future if they continue to, you know, clean. I mean, clean out Brook Lopez, D'Angelo Russell. They can ble- build off of D'Angelo Russell. That was a good pickup. He's doing well for doing well right now. If they can uh-huh. continue to go the route that they're going right now, they could be okay. I can believe it. I can believe it. I they definitely win more than twenty games that uh that they did last year. Um before I um brought you on, uh Jeremy I talked about Jeremy Lynn and his injury problems. Uh, he missed about sixty games last year, uh due to hamstring problems. First game out of the blocks this season, he uh, ruptures tendons in his knee. He's out for the year again. Is this um, career threatening for him this time? Is uh, his marketability at this point, in my opinion, has gone really down? To be totally honest with you, it really wasn't about his talent and, and his health wise, whatnot. With me, I think it's his mental, his mental aspect. He had issues in L.A. He lost his confidence in Houston. I really uh-huh. don't think that. It really doesn't matter. And to be totally honest with you, they signed him for, what, $8 million, a three-year, a $24 million contract last year. It really didn't matter. Now that they got D'Angelo yeah. Russell in, he'll be pretty much gone after this any, but pretty much after this contract anyway. So, really, Jeremy Lin was a stopgap point guard last year. I mean, he probably, he wanted to go to the Knicks. Let's think about this. He wanted to go to the New York Knicks. The Knicks didn't want him. Right. That's pretty That's much all true. I got to say about Jeremy Lin. Mm-hmm. That is true. Um, going back to Cleveland, uh, Derek Rose and Dwayne Wade, do you see these guys finishing out the season? Because I'll tell you right now, I just have a strange feeling about Wade. I have a feeling during the, during the middle of the season, he may just say, you know what, I'm done. Because he looks done. I mean, the fact that uh, Cleveland – I mean, the fact that Chicago let him go uh, last year, and this is, uh, you know, being that Chicago is his hometown and everything. Um, um, let me make this quick because I have to go. But think of it yeah. this way. I don't think it's about Chicago, Chicago Chicago Bulls letting him go. I don't think he wanted to stay. Uh, the Bulls management pretty much changed everything. What they what they promised him, they didn't deliver on. Uh, he uh-huh. he wanted to play with Jimmy Butler. They traded him to Jimmy. They traded him to Minnesota. Uh, Rondo uh-huh. was brought in. Now he's in New Orleans. So he did not want to be part of a rebuilding project. So I think that's what that case may be. He's only gonna he's gonna look at. He got nineteen million dollars from Chicago Bulls. He gets a one year two million dollar deal from Cleveland. He gets the he gets a he gets a um circus ride to the finals possibly. So uh-huh. That's what I see. You welcome back to Sports Tuesday, and I'll probably pop in on you you and Betty. Uh... It was Saturday and uh, hang out with you guys then. So you know, okay, uh, thanks, listen. man. Yeah, right, take care and God bless. All right, man. You too. All right. Source Nation has Ronald Ages, uh, the co-host of In the Zone Sports Radio with Betty Cantley. You can check them out 
on uh, Saturday evening from 6 to 8. And uh, um, he's, as you say, he's a busy man. Uh, he's new newscast director for WBTV, and he also was sports writer for True Hoop, uh, the True Hoop Network on ESPN.com. Uh, and uh, told it like it is with uh, a lot of the teams in the NBA, uh, pretty much uh, told the story on several teams and um, several players as well. So until next week, as I always say, uh, be good and be safe. Take care, everybody. <laughs>